All right. Welcome back to Steps of Freedom. Thank you. <laughs> We're back. We are back. Um, last week we started talking about renewing the mind. I look at the miracle list and I naturally want to break it up into parts. So the first part is kind of some inner, inner introspection. You have to look inward. Who do I need to forgive? You know, how do I feel about myself? Uh, how did I treat my parents when I was young? I got to deal with that. And then um, what are these negative thoughts that I keep having on a regular basis? We are not allowed, as Christians, we are not allowed, we are not permitted the privilege or, if, or the right, I'll say that, the legal right to hold on to unforgiveness. Okay? We do not. It'll make you sick. Not just sick in your mind, it'll make your body sick. Yeah. It'll make your body sick. We have far too many sick Christians in the church. If everybody just dealt with the yuck inside of their soul and their emotions, we'd have a lot a fewer, we'd have fewer sick Christians, right? Um, <clears throat> you can't hate yourself. You can't nitpick yourself. Father does not nitpick you. He doesn't criticize you. He does not have a long list of do's and don'ts for you to follow, to be accepted by Him. Okay? Contrary to what some churches teach, actually. All of God's wrath about sin landed where? On the cross. That's right. It's not landing on you. It's not coming to you. Will you be judged? Yeah, you'll be judged at the end. Not now. The bad, if the bad things are happening in your life, it's not because God. It's because of you. It's because of the enemy. It's because of the people. It's because of sin. All right, so you can't hate yourself or you're going to make yourself sick, very sick. You'll have an autoimmune disease, okay? You'll be sick. And there's a lot of them, hundreds of autoimmune diseases, wow. hundreds. Mm -hmm. um, I know somebody right now that has uh, something about the dry mouth, has a really dry mouth. And um, I know this person well. And they have spoken a lot of negativity out of their mouth. Mm. Complaining. Envy. Mm. I've heard it said that envy will break the teeth. Oh, wow. <coughs> huh? And the, bones. and the bones too, yeah. The bones. Um, which I guess that's teeth. Teeth is related to the bones, right? Okay, good. <laughs> okay, I'm on. I'm on. <laughs> so... Um, you know, and then your parents, you can't, you can't uh, just gloss over the fact that your parents were no good and you rebelled against them and then you became a Christian later and you're fine. Well, then look back at your life. Has it been fine? No, it's been a mess. Okay, why? How did you act when you were 16? Like a know-it-all, like most 16-year-olds? You know, did you rebel against your parents? And if you did... Says you brought a curse. You need to go back and, for, you know, apologize. Got to apologize. Um, <clears throat> and then number four is about the negative thoughts that you have in your mind. Chronic negative thoughts is going to bring about what? Depression. Depression. What else? Fear. Fear, yeah. Fear. Mental, Mental health issues. <clears throat> Absolutely, 100%. Negative thoughts, that's what Plano Spirits is all about, is all about what goes on between your two ears, your thoughts. And if you're, if you're constantly negative and, and criticizing yourself and complaining and, and all of that, yeah, you're going to end up with a mental illness. So the first four items on the miracle list are covering those four things. And now you have um, 
the next section, Renew Your Mind. Last week we talked about uh, some chapters in John and Matthew, right? And hopefully you've been reading over those. Keep going. Keep reading them. Maybe it'll click. What does it mean to abide? <laughs> what does that really mean to abide? What does it really mean to ask whatever in my name and it shall be done? Right. How do we get to that place? Mm -hmm. It's all about what you believe. Mm -hmm. That's what I was convicted of. Yeah. Belief. Mm -hmm. like, do I really, really believe? Yeah. I mean, I have to really, I'm asking myself that. Mm -hmm. Because if I really believe that what God says, if you believe, then those things are going to happen. And if I'm not seeing it, then maybe I'm not really believing it. Right. And we know belief is so important. Jesus in his hometown, he could not do, it says, many miracles. Why? Because of his problem? No, because of their their unbelief. Yeah. It astounds me that Jesus could not do something. <laughs> what? It, it's honest. It says he couldn't do it. That's how powerful the will is. That's right. Yeah, everybody's got a free will. Mm -hmm. You get to choose how to use it, right? You have the freedom to use it. But I'm telling you, if you want to uh, operate as a Christian and want the benefits of the Christian life, there are certain things you just have to tell your free will, no, I'm not doing that. So this next section is about renewing the mind. Okay, The first one's overcoming rejection. It's really overcoming childhood rejection. And... Um, <clears throat> You know, it's talking about what happens before a child's born, in childhood, and then how does that manifest in a person's life? Yes, it's long. I know it's long. Just, I don't know, drive to work and listen to it. You don't have to watch it. I mean, I would watch the first half an hour, 45 minutes to answer the questions in the, in the workbook. But the rest of it, just listen. Get to the end. Be someplace private. In your car, in the park, at home, and you know, if you got a bunch of family members at home, you got to go someplace else. Listen to the deliverance service after. Okay. Listen to it. Uh, there's a story I'll, I'll share with you. Why, how important it is to listen to that portion of the video. Um, I was working with a guy a couple weeks ago, and he was telling me a story about. Um, He's a carnal Christian. Maybe he changed his ways now. I hope so. That was my goal. But he's living with his girlfriend. And she just recently learned about deliverance. Okay? And so um, he's asleep next to her, and she's got the laptop open watching Brother Mike. I don't know what part she was at. Maybe they were like, come out in Jesus' name. I don't know. <laughs> he's sleeping next to her. And he's telling me about a dream he has. He has a dream. He's in his house with his son. And there's this like lizard man, reptile type oh. person. He's like, I think it was a demon. I go, okay. <laughs> and he goes, and I said in my dream, this house, we stand for Jesus. And he had to say it a couple times. And then the thing left. He wakes up and he slams the laptop shut. Mm. Well, the next morning... And yells something at her. Next morning, she tells him, well, you know, I was listening to this man speak about demons and deliverance, and he then <laughs> shares the dream. So he came in to see me. He says, I think maybe I might have a, you know, a demon maybe? I go, maybe. You live with your girlfriend? Okay. <laughs> maybe you got a few in there. Um, yeah, I explained to him, okay, that thing in your dream, that happened in your subconscious? That's inside your mind. That spirit is in your mind. Yeah, and he had a good deliverance. He never, he never even been to a service. He never even watched one of Mike's teachings. His girlfriend just told him about it, and he had that dream. He became a believer, and then he came in. Amen. <laughs> so look, listen to it, okay? 
it might stir some stuff up in you, then you know what's still in there. Yeah. And then you can deal with it. You can't deal with it if you don't know if it's there. Right? So are you I have a question. Oh, sure. Saying that um, the demons are in your soul and not your spirit? Oh, yes, ma'am. Absolutely. So um, I think it's on one of them. It asks what are the five parts of a human. So the Bible describes the inner man. And, of course, we know about the body. So the inner man being the heart and the spirit, right? Well, years ago, um, Mike Smith, the guy who started this ministry, I got a revelation from the Lord um, that the, the heart or, or the mind and the, the heart, the soul, are two different things. So the mind, right, you process information in your mind and it's stored in the brain, the body. And then your soul is where your emotions are. Your spirit is separate. That's where the Holy Spirit is. And no, no demonic spirits can get in there. That's what's born again. That's what's new. I was just hoping you would just say what you just said. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks, Jeanette. <laughs> she's taking over my no. she's taking over my Bible study. Okay. No, no, I'm their coordinator. I wanted to make sure oh. that they're in a good place. I know. I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. So that's absolutely your spirit, man. That's what's saved. That's what's brand new. That's what's you know new creation, right? You're perfect there, and no spirit can get no evil spirit can get in there. But we know we can be afflicted in our body. That's not born again. My soul, oh goodness. No, it's a lot better than it was. <laughs> right. So thanks for asking that question. That was good. Um, anxiety disorders. Um, that was my struggle for my life um, for almost 20 years. That's 20 years of my life. And um, it's, they're here. They're in the mind. Even though you feel it in your body, you're like, but I feel it. And I would, I felt it here. Okay. Mike always will point right here to fear. He, he'll grab the bridge of your nose and he'll point right here and say, that's where the fear is. Mm. Um, I had, I've had COVID twice now. The first time I had COVID uh, was, I guess, 21, yeah, a year ago, January, this last January, a year before. And after I had that, um, virus or whatever it is, um, I was losing hair, mm. clumps of hair. Wow! And that morning it was ministry training and, and it was going on for, for, um, a couple weeks, I'd say I was having clumps of hair and then I would comb my hair out and more clumps would come out. Ooh. So I remember ministry training, I was sitting right back there and he's like, okay, does anybody, you know, need prayer for anything? And I, I just I think I adjusted in my seat and I remembered my hair falling out and I got up and I felt a little dizzy. And I came forward and I said, um, I'm losing my hair. And he said, that's a fear spirit. Mm. And he pointed, he, you know how he does it. <laughs> <laughs> I started crying and um, it's actually on YouTube. You just see the back of me, but it was like this a sneeze cough. It's the only way I can describe it coming out. It was this anxiety, a sneeze cough. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I know some of you have experienced that before. It's like that the same sneezing and coughing, at the, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> I washed my hair the next day. No, excuse me. I, t I, sp I did two more days. I didn't wash my hair the next day because I'm like, I'm going to see if it really happened. Because you know, ladies, you wash your hair and a lot of hair comes out, like if you have long hair especially. Um, I'm like, I'm going to wait two days. Hardly anything came out. It stopped immediately. Immediately. Yeah. So, and now my hair is back. I'm so happy. <laughs> it was getting really thin. It's getting really thin. It's my glory. <laughs> okay, anxiety. Uh, mental illnesses, seminar. There's part one. I think there's four parts. So if that's something you're interested in, something you struggle with, go there. You know, Mike, um, one of his very first cases with a, was a guy with schizophrenia. Mm. His name is Nick Grimsman. He's running for city councilman right now. Wow. 
uh, District 8, I think, or something. I don't know. I think it is, yeah. Nick Grimson. He's the one who told me to come and see Mike. He did my first deliverance, Nick did. Yeah. He was really sick. He tried to kill himself, I think, nine times. I believe that's what his book says. Yes? He has a CD called um, I Hate the Devil. I love, I have that CD still. It's one of his first ones. Yeah. It's intense. Is it online? Can you get it online? Uh, no, I'll bring you a copy. I have one in Spanish, too, actually. I Hate the Devil. It's Nick Grinsman. Yeah, that's a powerful, powerful CD. Um, yeah, he's a friend. He's a good friend of mine. Grimsman, G R I M A N. Maybe E N. Grimsman. Write that down. I don't know about that, but he's got um, Overcoming Mental Illness is his first book. I think he's got about five books out right now. Yep, The Father's Friends Ministry. Uh, yeah, that, I Hate the Devil, that CD. It's powerful. It's, if you're dealing with this or... Um, you know, a lot of confusion in your mind. If you're dealing with arguing with people a lot, confusion, head pressure, dizziness, forgetfulness. forgetfulness. Yeah, that's all witchcraft. Uh, that all. That I hate the devil. CD. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's a good one. Um, so yeah, he introduced me first. Anyway, Mike, I believe, has got three documented. Um, people who were diagnosed with schizophrenia, they were full-blown schizophrenics, and they are now healed. Amen. Nick is one, David Baldwin is, the, uh, is another. Yep. So, and many, many more. Baldwin? Baldwin. David Baldwin, yeah, he's on our YouTube channel. And his wife. Huh? And we know his wife. He's a good guy, yep. Um, him and I got our name together. Oh, good. Great. Welcome, sister. She knows, she knows our people. <laughs> awesome. Um, I'll say it here. Uh, my own testimony is I was diagnosed with uh, clinical depression about 20 years ago. And it was two years ago that I trusted the Lord. I was on a lot of medication, and I trusted God. I believed he was telling me it was get, time to get off. And, um, yeah, I did. Uh, it came at a cost, but then in about 15 minutes of deliverance, I was free from it. Wow. Yeah, I was on almost 300 milligrams of antidepressant every day. What was the name of it? It's very, that's poison, that stuff. It's poison. It's all right. Don't worry about it. I'm not telling you what to do. No, I know. I know. Don't worry about it. Look, I, that is not a kind. I would never, ever, ever tell somebody to get off of their medication. Okay. So that they say that that's harder than heroin to get off. It is. Yep. Um, and I almost went into a detox center. I was going to spend sixty thousand dollars to do it. Oh my god. I was this close to calling two friends of mine who, uh, you know, they're they've done very well in their lives. But I've been friends with them like over 20 years, and I was desperate. I had vertigo so bad uh, that I could not get from the bed to the bathroom without bruising myself. Mm -hmm. I was house sitting for some animals, and I was two hours up in the mountains. So I was really scared. And so I reached out to Mike, and I was like telling him all this stuff, right? And he writes me back this, you know, Mike, he, he didn't write back like two words. <laughs> Or three words. He writes about a mini paragraph. These are the spirits. You got to tell them what to, you know, you got to bind them. You got to do this. These are just, you know, blah. And I'm like, I can't understand what you're telling me. Like your mind is all jumbled. And, and uh, I wrote him back. I'm like, I can't process what you're saying to me. Crying, you know, all that mess. And then he just wrote, get out now. And I ran to the bathroom. And I stood over that toilet for about 15 minutes, coughing my head off. I read it. Wow. Read it. Now, I will say, stop and say this. One thing that's, I think, it's not 100% necessary, but it really helps. If the person needing deliverance trusts the person doing the deliverance, it helps tremendously. 
Or yeah. you have someone like um, telling you about like my one of the pastor that I was in the church that told me about Rick because mm -hmm. I was crying my eyes out one day. He's like, I'm gonna put this guy on the phone and he's gonna ask you a lot of personal questions. And I'm like, well, who is this guy? And then I heard Michael W. Smith. And mm -hmm. I heard that name for years because everybody that goes to church knows that name. Right. There's so much stuff and it's like, I wish I would have done this a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I know, me too. Me too. It held me back because I didn't trust. Because I heard the name. Oh, yeah. And you know who you are. Yep. Yeah. People will be people. And it is really important what we say about other people. <laughs> um, it's important that we treat people with care and dignity when we're doing deliverance, when we're praying for other people. Not all ministers take that approach. Um, I, I think I learned by watching... Uh, a good example and, an, and a bad example yeah. of that. And so that's what you see today. I hopefully I em emulate more Mike Smith's approach than the, the other. Um, you know, we're all in a process of learning. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, trust is very important. I trusted him. Mm -hmm. And he, it's funny, he gave me, first he gives me the long, you know, Mike doesn't send these long emails. And then he wrote me the, the quick, you know, get out yeah. now, and that's what did it. Yeah. And uh, I was here serving uh, 30 days later. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was, I mean, that wasn't it. That, I wasn't, oh, completely done, believe me. A lot of wounds, a lot of hurt happened over that length of time. So... Some things are still healing. So this is a really good seminar here. And then um, autoimmune diseases is the other one. Um, yeah, autoimmune diseases are related to self-hatred. If you don't like yourself, your body then turns on itself. What parts of your body? Could be any part of your body. As in breaking down, hurting, or just part of the Dry mouth. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um, lupus, fibromyalgia. fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, chronic fatigue, good, arthritis, arthritis. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of digestive problems, like that. Parkinson's. Um, Parkinson's. I don't know. I don't think that's a. Yeah, I think it's more of the mind. Yeah. What about like diabetes? Yes. So diabetes is not, from what I understand, the medical people in the room can correct me, please, is not an autoimmune disease. However, it acts very similar to one. Mm. Am I right? <laughs> mm. It's kind husband of autoimmune because the oh. cells in the pancreas get destroyed that produce insulin. Oh, okay. So you, you now have to inject insulin because your body's not producing it. You have it. to do metformin, which kind of enhances them to produce a little bit more. Okay. Because not all of them are destroyed. So it's kind of like self destruction. Exactly. So it has a little bit of autoimmune, in my opinion. Okay, yeah. Is um, kidney disease autoimmune? Huh? Kidney. Is kidney disease autoimmune? Um, I don't believe it is. I'm looking around for people <laughs> giving me some support right now. Um, I have heard um, and I understand that uh, deep wounds, heart, terrible heartbreak, yeah, is trauma. Sit, trauma sits in the kidneys. Yeah. What about cancer? Bitterness. 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 Yeah, bitterness. Different. But, but you meet yes. people that are loving mm -hmm. and have cancer. And I think, where, where's that bitterness? I don't see it. That's great. Um, I've met, yeah, I've, I told a story. I've, I've worked with three people with uh, bone cancer. And uh, my first 10 minutes with them, they're wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then we got in a little deeper. And then one gal, we were here on the floor with her. And it was the end. It was like over two hours. And she finally said, but why did God let me get sick? Mm -hmm. There it is. There's what's causing the cancer. Yeah. That's it. That was it. I know another lady. She's a wonderful, beautiful woman. She's from Scottsdale. She uh, has done a lot for God. She's a great career. 
She's a big giver. She's volunteer. She's wonderful, loving, kind. People probably love her. Awesome. We got, and she's in her 60s. And we got all the way to 19 years old. Her fiance died in a car crash. Mm -hmm. Okay, you gotta let that hurt out. And she's crying. And then she's like, but why did God let it happen? Mm -hmm. God, why did you have to take him from me? I'm like, that's it. That's the problem. I'm like, repent. <laughs> you know, you got to let it go. You got to let it go. And she wouldn't do it. She she didn't. She, but I do this for God, and I do that for God, and I, and I, I. And I'm like, whew. Okay. I'm like, look, I explained it to you, and I pray for you, but the other woman who had bone and breast cancer, who was losing her mind, cried a river and continues to cry a river in repentance. And guess what? Her PET scan says zero cancer. Zero cancer. She's getting her life back. She's getting her mind back. She's getting relationships back with her, her daughter and her grandchildren. I mean, she's 77 years old. Renju and I, we went to her home, did the first one. We walk into the room, she starts up chucking. I was like, whoa. She was so ready. She was ready. Yeah. She was ready. She had enough of her own mind to know she was out of her mind. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yep, yeah, she had enough. And um, God bless her caregiver who set the whole thing up. And they still come, and as far as I know, she's still getting deliverance. She's still pressing through, yeah. yeah. I think she's dealing with some, you know, mental. She had a horrible life of abuse. Oh, my gosh. I never. But she's writing letters to her abusers. I forgive you. I release you in the name of Jesus. I bless you. They're dead, but she's writing them out. Amen. Crying. Guess what? Those tears are healing her. Yes, yes. Healing her. Mm -hmm. Nothing escapes the Lord's view. He sees it all. You may have forgotten, but he has not forgotten. And he doesn't remember it because he wants a point and say, you did this. No. Mm -hmm. He wants, he sees it and he remembers it because he wants to point at it and go, I want to heal you right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give it to me. Amen. Give it to me. Hallelujah. That's what I want next. Mm -hmm. What does he want next from you? You're holding on to something. Mm -hmm. You may not even know what it is. You may not know why you're holding on to it. You may feel like you have a right to hold on to it. Just let it go. Mm -hmm. Right? Let it go. I mean, okay, and then the last one is Miracle Blockers, which I didn't write anything up for that, but that's the last video. Uh, it's excellent. Um, I don't know if it's that. Oh, autoimmune disease, too. He does talk about it in the Miracle Blockers. Um, if you don't forgive yourself, everybody is an epic failure in life. We all have made a ton of mistakes. If you don't forgive yourself, you will fall into a state of victimization type. We call that self-pity. You will never receive anything from God if you remain in a state of self-pity. That will block your miracles for the rest of your life. Nope, we're not allowed to do that. I wish it was preached from the pulpit. Stop self-pity. We can't, we can't do that. Yeah, these are the list of things you can't do. List of laws. You can't hold on to the forgiveness. <laughs> you can't have self-pity. You can't go on blaming everybody for your problems. You gotta take responsibility, right? <laughs> it's not a bunch of do's and don'ts like don't lie and don't cuss and don't smoke and don't drink. Of course, don't do those things. But really what God cares about is your heart. Yes. It's your heart. So uh, so those are those videos. And then there are over 300 YouTube teachings. Wow. 
Mike's got over 300 of them. So check them out. It's under the House of Healing AZ. All right. And, uh, I don't know if you need to write that down. I think everybody's pretty much got that in there. <clears throat> All right. So, um, do you have, I have a question. Yes. Have Thank you. Ministers such as yourself in other states that are doing this because there's such a need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we're, we're unique, but we're not so unique that it's not happening in other places. Right. So there are deliverance ministries in lots of different states, um, that I know about from here. I know there's a group in Kansas. I know there's a group in New York. I know there's um, Tennessee. I know about one. Uh, who's connected to us? I don't know. But we have phone ministers that will take phone calls in different parts of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, we do see people come from all over the country, and sometimes the world will come right here because they, they look for it. I don't know, the it factor. They look for what we're doing here, and they can't exactly find it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they find us on YouTube, right? And they go to their churches, and they, they, don't, they don't know what to do. So that's a good question. I, I wish we had, like, a little map. And, like a network of people. I know because yeah. um, I'm from Chicago, and uh, one of my good friends goes to a huge church. Mm -hmm. And I says, you know, you have a deliverance team. And there, she's like, what? what's that <laughs> yeah I think I, I would guess most Christians um, were like I was I didn't know I didn't believe I was taught that I'm a Christian so I cannot have spirits in myself yeah and that's so wrong it's so wrong yeah um, and so I'm I thank God for the now I understand the full gospel Right? He preached the word, he healed the sick, he's cast out demons, the full gospel. It's not talking about the gifts of the Spirit, mm -hmm. the fivefold ministry. Okay, that's good, but what about the full gospel? <laughs> right? So um, that's a good question. And yeah, we're, we're growing here. Even though it's been here a long time, Mike's been doing his thing, and we have more ministers probably than most of the time. It's been the last five or six years that he's really grown in this building. So um, there's a lot of things that can grow. Yes? Doesn't Mike have a uh, vision about an international? He does, yes. He got a prophecy, actually. It was... Might be expanding. Yeah. <laughs> the International Deliverance Center. Yeah, that's the third phase. He was given a prophecy a very long time ago. I think it was confirmed. I'm probably going to get the number wrong, but it's confirmed... I think seven times. And one person just walked in off the street, had a bike with him, and just came, God said this. And it just was confirmed, confirmed, confirmed. And so this is phase two of that. Now with the internet, it can be international. That's right. Yeah, well, I mean, people come here, but we do phone, and then there's Zoom. I mean, there's people from different countries on Rick's Zoom. I can just make a phone call and say, Get out now. <laughs> right? Just send him an email. <laughs> he does his Facebook. That's his ministry, Facebook. Yeah. yeah. No, I was just thinking about Brother Mike. I met him back in 2015, and I was having a bad period. He just emailed me, like, how's it going? Oh, wow. And I was like, how did he know? You know, it just really shocked me. <laughs> it's, like, so personal like that. Mm-hmm. And I think also it must be led by the Spirit, of course. Of course. Mm -hmm. But it's just really been a blessing. Yeah, he's, he's a blessing. He's yeah. a blessing. So send him that email and just say thanks for the miracle list. <laughs> <laughs> Don't send him a whole paragraph. That's your <laughs> no, your homework is the video. Okay, uh, so you're going to get into thank you very much. Thanks for watching.